some news now, or um, information anyway. We're actually searching for news to try and get the, the best information that we can about this rollover of a semi in Hibbing um, containing um, some explosive chemicals. Um, I, I first learned about it from uh, Aaron Brown, Minnesota Brown, who uh, wears a lot of hats, does community radio, is an, is an instructor um, up uh, in the Iron Range area, a longtime editor and uh, former uh, mine worker and, and much, much more. And uh, we've called on him before to kind of give us information and kind of talk a little bit about the culture of the Iron Range. And uh, Aaron has uh, made himself available this morning to talk about what's happening again. Aaron, good morning, first of all, and thanks for taking some time out of your Friday to tell us what's happening. Hi, JP. Yeah, sure thing. Glad to be here. What is going on? Well, uh, this uh, earlier this morning, a uh, semi-truck uh, carrying ammonium nitrate, uh, one of the compounds used as a blasting agent at the mines, uh, rolled over at the on Highway 5, which, which goes north from the area in between Hibbing and Chisholm. It goes up to Side Lake and, and, and beyond. And uh, it, it rolled over at the turnoff where um, it turns to go into Hibbing Taconite. And um, I don't know uh, how you know many times or how much it rolled over or where it landed exactly, but the reports are from local media and, and Duluth media that uh, um, the truck uh, leaked some fuel but did the tanker with the ammonium nitrate, which is an explosive element, did not leak, and um, and uh, the driver was was had some minor injuries, but was is being treated at the local hospital, uh, so he wasn't hurt badly. And um, right now, uh, as I understand it, Highway Five is closed while they clean up the site and and you know just make sure everything is safe um, uh, and that there weren't any compromises in that tank. Uh, uh, the mine. Uh, is actually the turnoff. There's about two miles before you get into the the mine, and so the mine is still operating. Everything's normal uh, inside the mine, uh, and uh, there will be some traffic concerns, you know, as they figure out when they can get the highway open again. But but basically, uh, it's a very big crisis averted because had that tank uh, leaked or had any serious problems, uh, it's a very potent chemical uh, and, and would have been a, a pretty bad disaster uh, had that had that happened. On your Minnesota Brown blog, you uh, did some professorial, got some information about ammonium nitrate, and you're the educator, or you're the professor anyway. What does it do? How does it work? And what could it do if it got into what? one of our watersheds here? Yeah, well, it, uh, bear in mind, I'm a, I'm a, I'm an instructor of communication, so not, <laughs> not a chemistry science, instructor. Yeah. You know, it, it's uh, it's an explosive element. It um, I think the bigger concern would have been the danger of an explosion, uh, but certainly um, it's a it's a chemical that would not you know that would is not a natural chemical for uh, um, for uh, fresh water. So I mean, there would have been uh, consequences I think related to where it flowed. Uh, of course. Um, you know, a little history about Hibbing Taconite uh, that's of uh, regional relevance is that um, it's the site uh, on the on the site of the property is the the Hill of Three Waters or, or uh, the three way watershed for um, uh, this whole Upper Great Lakes area. In other words, there's a rock up there where a drop of water flows one way. It goes up to the Hudson Bay. Uh, it goes it goes the other way. It goes down the St. Louis River to Lake Superior. And if it goes the other way, it goes uh, to the Mississippi River and down to the Gulf of Mexico. So um, a very important uh, geological and, and, and cultural site. I mean, it's, um, uh, it's, it's been a, a really a sacred place for, you know, mm-hmm. 10,000 10, years of, of, of history in the area. Um, and, and the mine has, while it's not open to the public per se, it is protected by the mine. They don't mine in there and they don't, they don't interfere with the site. Uh, so th- that's just for some perspective. That's the that's located, really just about two miles from where this accident occurred. Uh, so that's another uh, dynamic that you're you're worried about. And I think we were talking earlier. I'm fairly confident that that spot is on the St. Louis River side of the watershed, um, uh, where the water flows south uh, to um, to St. Lucia Lake Superior. 
Aaron, we spent uh, much of yesterday, we carried uh, WPR, allowed us to carry their coverage of the hearings um, on, you know, hundreds of miles from where you are, or at least 100 or so miles from you are in Hurley about mining in, in Bad River something. So, so we've sort of been inundated with information about some of the hazards of resource extraction. And uh, this appears to be one of them, some of the chemicals that are used. But another one that isn't talked about as much, but I know that you know about um, both individually and culturally, is the danger to the miners and to the people that support them, like um, the, the, you know, the driver of this truck and the other vehicles. Mm-hmm. I think we're going to stay with you through news from the Associated Press, um, Aaron, just to give you some time to answer this. Um, sure. But um, talk about that. I mean, you've been in the mines. You've had um, family and close relations that are in the mines, and, and uh, it can be dangerous as well. Uh, well, yeah, the mining is, uh, um, has historically been very dangerous. Of course, it's been made a lot safer in recent years, which uh, has the effect of, of making a lot of people forget that it's a, it's a very, uh, you know, this is an industry that uses very big equipment and does very powerful things with the land, you know, and very, uh, you know, big rocks, big materials, and, and accidents, uh, when they occur, are, are very dangerous. Um, they, fortunately, they occur uh, far less frequently than they used to. Um, it was a you know it was common uh, to have a, uh, a deaths and, and 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 serious injuries in the early days of mining when when there wasn't the worker safety protections there are there are now um, it, it is a it is a it is a you know fundamentally there's always going to be a danger in, in using explosives and and using big equipment um, uh, like the ones they use at the mines at, in, including that they would use at the mine uh, that is proposed in northern Wisconsin. Um, so I mean, yeah, there, there, there's always an element, uh, and you you have to hope, you have to trust uh, that the company that you're working with is committed to um, to safety and 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 to environmental protections to the degree possible. Um, I think the Iron Range taconite industry uh, here in Minnesota, um, a lot of hard won understanding between um, local officials, communities, and the mines has been reached to the point that. There's a fair amount of trust. Uh, I think that you know this is a very rare occasion that happened today, and uh, that it was handled uh, promptly. And there's a process in place for it. Um, you know, the, the the places in the world and in the country where you see the most trouble are are with companies that don't have the track record, that don't that that are either newer or more uh, to use a bad terminology, maybe fly by night. You know, more. Uh, you know, uh, those kinds of companies are the ones where you see the most trouble. Um, established resource uh, companies do, you know, they, they know they need to continue working in, in areas around the country, so they, they don't want to create a bad track record for themselves. And Cleveland Cliffs is the operator and co-owner of Hibbing Taconite, and, and um, they, have a, they have a reasonably good track record uh, of worker safety and, and environmental um, efforts. Uh, but, you know... <laughs> It's always with a caveat, you know. It's 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 extraction, and if you look at it from the air, you see a great amount of change in the landscape uh, from mining. It's inherent in the business, and and the Iron Ranger in Minnesota. If you fly over it, you sure see it. Aaron Brown, uh, instructor at uh, I want to make sure I, I I can't remember the it's Hibbing is it Hibbing they, they change the names on me too. Sometimes. Hibbing Community College, H- Hibbing yes. HCC. Uh, community radio guy and uh, former newspaper editor, author about the culture of, uh, of and history of the Minnesota's Iron Range, talking to us, you know, taking time out of his Friday to talk to us about a breaking news story, ammonium nitrate tanker truck rolled over by Hibbing Taconite. What we know right now is that none of the ammonium nitrate has spilled and uh, there's conflicting reports about an evacuation, but it sounds like a smaller area about a, of about yeah, a half yeah. mile. Yeah, it's. Uh, I guess you'd call it an evacuation in that they've. It, there, there's no houses or, or, or buildings near where this crash happened, but the area right around it, they're they're closing down while they fix it up. I'm going to put a link on uh, the WGZS Facebook page to your blog, MinnesotaBrown.com, and just put it in your little browser on your phone or your um, or your computer. Or there's other ways to keep track of what Aaron. Um, is doing, but I also want to thank you for you know you sent out the tweet, and then we were you know because you're uh, you know think because of what you're uh, following and just your interest, um, it, it, uh, we were able to find out about it and get in touch with you, Aaron, and uh, I'm grateful for that. Thank you very much. Yeah. Well-